In, in fact, it was my father-in-law's graveyard. He was, uh, alhamdulillah, he was a great sheikh around here. He was leader of Dawah al Islam, uh, Muhammad Shamsul Haq. And we were, we started praying as a family. We were just doing, uh, you know, ziyara, praying. And suddenly, from the wind, we experienced beautiful uh, smell of perfume. And if somebody just came and told me this story, I would have said, you're telling hocus pocus, you know, it's something wrong. Somebody must have been pouring some other nearby. And my wife was there, my children were there as a witness. And we could not believe that something like that happened. And then we looked around, where did it come from? Where did it come? And within, within, you know, couple, like seconds basically, we couldn't find any source of anything. There was no wind blowing that it came from another grave or something like that. So sometimes miracles happen, things happen, and you don't have to go and explain to other people, but you experience it yourself. <coughs> Subhanallah. Similar experience. Similar experience? Really? Subhanallah. Brother uh, Sheikh uh, Abu Tahir Chaudhry by saying, in the same grave, he had the same experience on another occasion. <laughs> Subhanallah. So, you know, I think if, if you have a good experience, if you contribute in this world, if you stand for people, you do the right thing, then you will feel something special, even in, in your grave. Brothers uh, and sisters, I told you about the uh, wheelchair uh, stall, uh, wheelchair stall project, where we lift, we help this brother. After 11 years on the pavement, we we gave him a wheelchair, converted it into a shop, and on the first night he received 4,000 taka. This is like one month's salary for even for uh, you know from official people. So Alhamdulillah, now the feedback is that he's doing very well. And soon I expect he will be employing other people. So he agreed to be in that video. And Alhamdulillah, we are now raising money for uh, at least 100 people like that. And I want Brother uh, Ansari, Abu Sayyid Ansari to do all the announcements. Because there are people amongst us I know who are willing to, <coughs> Excuse me. Who are willing to contribute. So, and uh, some of them are known to my... Uh, my wife, Sajida, so please. I to be Okay, by the way, uh, Three more people. They didn't want to announce it, but they have, uh, they have promised uh, for now two more, two more people after you finish. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Jazakallahu khair, Badr Mas'ud, wa ja'alhu fi bizani hassanatih. Wa Allah yazikra wa khair. Ashukul thunubad, Masud bhai, awar. Actually, uh, we are talking about um, building dreams, right? Okay, begging to business. Okay, right. This is the second one. So, you have got the leaflet anyway in your hands. So, you can see in the, the last page of this leaflet, the second one is begging to business. Uh, SubhanAllah, uh, make a disabled individual self-sufficient. Are you listening guys? You had food, right? Alhamdulillah, somebody, some people are still having desserts. MashaAllah. So, make a disabled individual self-sufficient. And we, we watched a video on this as well. Earning an income with dignity. SubhanAllah. It sounds amazing, isn't it? A disabled person, even in this country, those who get a disabled living allowance or a personal independent payment, they change the name. So the government is trying them to be self-sufficient anyway. Yeah, so it's very important 
to be in the self-sufficient, then they can contribute to to their family, to their families, to the society, to the country at large. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, very few charity organizations, they have got this sort of idea. Zakallah and Brother Masoud Alhamdulillah for bringing the innovative idea, Alhamdulillah, which is really amazing, begging to business, Alhamdulillah. So before I go to begging to business, I have got another good news. Ready, to, ready for that? MashaAllah. We have got another three more tubes. We asked for ten, and we got how many? Thirteen. Can you please say thank you? MashaAllah. Because of your ikhlas and sincerity, Alhamdulillah, we achieved that. So thank you very much. Jazakumullahu khairan. Awesome jazak. Brother Ki Ashun Muth Bunu Bat. Awadir Ki Shazik Rajinam. I think Barrister Islam is there if I'm not mistaken. And he's there. MashaAllah. Jazakumullahu khair. Awesome jazak. MashaAllah. And two other Barristers here. Barrister Khalid Noor. President of Muslim Professional Forum. They, they, this is a professional body and they, they are doing a tremendous job uh, for the community as well. And Barrister Nazir Ahmed, I think he was there somewhere. Oh, he's here, yeah. sorry. Yeah, he's he, here. He's in the right place now. Okay, Jazakumullah khairan wa aslam jazak. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, so if you want to, if you want to make a person self-sufficient, are you listening? I know you can't find the same moment after you start. So say, let's say the dua, inshallah. Yalla, please say. Inshallah. Ameen, ya Rabbal Alameen. So, I'm going to video you the key. It's actually kill us self-sufficient. Uh, kitab on Iraq, no, no. Video the Muhammad Shubi, inshallah. Let's watch the video. from today, this will be a new beginning and this will change his life. My little brothers and sisters in Islam, you just watched the Bengali video, I see Bengali anyway. The main jitter para kurtsan, again disabled manor, jahatane, baane. Ama de de shikin de kub abohela kara hai, disabled manor de ke. Amra kub abohela kuri amra de shaw, koi atul lingla, lula, otshomosta amra shabdo use kuri, oliya de bil laita pane nashule. Islamo ita niche de kara hoise, ni de shaw culture de ita hoshu niche. Amra discrimination hoa, ita yuchin, amra equality act 2010 or against disabled. Barristers of Allah, right? Subhanallah. Ekho on, jaja yudu gya, Allah ki tarare ki tu self-sufficient khora, tarare khamnur shujuk dewa, tarare apna jalatate wheelchair use khuri ho khamnur to pare, tarare ap training dewa, ite ki tu khub important. Karan, afne tarare ekta new life dira, ekta jibon dira. Allah subhanahu ta'ala ten khuira, jya wa man ahiyaha fa ka anna ma ahiyya nasa jami'a. Jadi, afne ekzon manusia basain. Afne le ekzon manusia basain. Tapi kintu syara piti bir dunia manusia basain lah. If you say one line, that means as though you have saved the entire humanity. Anybody wants to join for this project, inshallah, all you need to spend is just five hundred pounds, my dear brothers and sisters, Islam, and you can pay by instalment. Afne le show show you kui design ni, afne le show di design ni. The one as a man should have done not only such a one the one that like the one sister she wants to give from there, mashallah. A massive back, people, the sister, back me, mashallah. It's a lot of fun. 
فور ما شاء الله فور تكبير 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 تدخل الى ابراهيم تكبير استغل بوي تكبير ما شاء الله جزاكم الله خير واحسن الجزاء في الدنيا وفي الاخره اوكي ما شاء الله دونت فورس اني وان فور اوكي شي اوريدي جيم اوكي ما شاء الله سو فايف كان يو سي فايف فايف ما شاء الله 500 500 فور افراد سيستر تو اغوي يا لك براذر سو لو كيتا خبر الرجال قوامون على النساء ليس كذلك سبحان الله يلا كيف ما شاء الله five sisters are giving one hundred pounds each. ما شاء الله. أنا تتك بين for the five sisters. تتك بين. ما شاء الله. We can't do, um, you know, because we need to prepare for salat al tarawih. We need to hear from the sheikh. إن شاء الله. If anybody wants to uh, contribute, إن شاء الله. You can talk to Brother Masoud. You can talk to other trustees. إن شاء الله. May Allah accept your donations. جزاكم الله خير. Now we're going to ask our chef to give a talk, and then before we end, I'll tell you about the Turkey project. Uh, it, uh, I'll just mention, in case anybody is leaving now, that we're going to feed 1,000 people, inshallah. Say inshallah. We're going day after tomorrow, and uh, also on the 16th of April, we're doing full live program from 5 o'clock till, till Fajr. And inshallah, we hope each one of you will join us and you will support us. Thank you, sister, for coming. You, you are a great inspiration. May Allah bless each one of you. And now I'm going to ask our Fazila uh, to Sheikh, Dr. Hani al banna to say a few words. If he doesn't say what I want to hear from him, I will intervene and ask him some specific questions. Fadal ya Sheikh. Can we get the phone? Yeah, that's okay. No need, no need. Sure. Alhamdulillah, uh, thank you very much for asking me to come to be with you today. It's a great honor and pleasure to be with you. I learned a lot. My first field trip was in 1990 to Sudan after the flood. My second field trip was in 1991. Where to? Bangladesh, after the cyclone. The people have not seen the cyclone of 1991. It was 25 million people underwater. And we traveled there actually to help people with two of our brothers from Bradford who raised at that time 30,000 pounds for Bangladesh. That's why we opened the office there at the time after this visit. To distribute. Alhamdulillah. You went and with me or after me? After you. After me. Yeah. And with another brother, what's his name? Uh, Siraj Salikin. Siraj Salikin, yeah. yeah. After that, they went as young people. This was the beginning of my relationship with, uh, with Bangladesh. Not only that, I was doing my doctor of medicine, which is like PhD, and I failed badly, major failure and they did not uh, wipe out or cancel my, uh, my thesis and they gave me a chance to uh, write it again. This was 1990. Uh, in June, June I think, or uh, 1991, it was a uh, monsoon or cyclone in Bangladesh. And we could not be able to find anybody to travel to Bangladesh at that time. And I was supposed to be submitting my thesis before November, so in four months' time. And those two brothers from Bradford was, was first class tickets to go to Bangladesh. After two, three weeks going around the mosques, nobody wanted to go to Bangladesh. You know what happened, Maulana? I decided on one Friday morning, and this for the young people, to leave my thesis and to travel to Bangladesh, to prioritize Bangladesh to your doctor of medicine. And on the same day, at 6 o'clock at night, 
the evening, I was looking at my data, the numbers, the figures, because I was a doctor, and they used to cut bodies. Bodies, you know bodies? Bismillah, mashallah. Bismillah, mashallah. I did 200 of you. I was, it was in the abortions. The, the fetuses which have been aborted at the age of 14 to 28 weeks. And on that night, Allah decided to let me to discover a new hypothesis or a new theory. Why? This was the message of Barakah. You cannot prioritize the work for Allah and Allah will leave you alone without any reward. When I decided before Jum'ah on the same day to travel to Bangladesh and leave my thesis, Allah let me to revisit the figures again and to write a new theory, which was actually original theory. Then I passed my, my uh, degree. So never ever underestimate what you do for others when you give time, when you give effort, when you give knowledge, when you give uh, vision, when you give ideas that Allah will never reward you. He will. The more you give, the more you get. The more you stand for others, the more Allah will stand for you. The more you support others, the more Allah supports you. The more you make others happy, the more that Allah will bring happiness to you. Rizq is not in money. Rizq is beyond the dimension of money. Rizq in health, risk in knowledge, risk in the wife, that you are, you marry a wife, that you make your, hab, your, your house like a heaven, risk in your children, you don't have diseases, you don't have problems, you have good education, risk is huge, it's a vast, it's unlimited. So risk is not only money, risk is baraka. Allah make baraka in what we have of little money. In the good old days, 40 years ago, when we started this operation, or this, I call it movement, not just only operation. We started humanitarian movement. Listen to it. Whoever is listening to me have to understand what I'm saying. We started humanitarian movement, global humanitarian movement without money, without resources, without office, with nothing, but with young people, secondary school and university students who stood up with us. We used to walk from door to door, from street to street, from shop to shop, from mosque to mosque, from town to town, from city to city, from country to country, with no resources, with no telephone number, with nothing. And the first donation was 20 pence from a young child at the age of nine years. You can imagine, 20 pence became nowadays more than a billion pound or two billion pound has been spent already. It started as one organization, the Muslim Aid came in 1985. Then now we have 150 international Muslim charities in UK and 450 and more local Muslim organization in UK. That's why I call it a movement. And don't ever and never underestimate the right step at the right time, at the right vision, at the right direction. <coughs> no money was there available for us. When we used to go to our mosque, we raised 100 pound, we came out from the mosque, very happy. Very grateful to Allah for 100 pounds. We used to stand out in front of the mosque in the street with donation boxes. One pence, a penny a day. If anybody you remember this, Mr. Uh, what's your name? Mimo. You give him a nickname called Mimo? 
From tonight, here's Mimo, huh? We Mimo him. Is that here, your father? Is he your father? No, not you. No, those two. Those two, oh yeah, look at me. Your father is called Mimo now. Change my leg. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what we used to do, we never looked at the money as a challenge. We never looked at the money as a challenge. We looked at ourselves that we need to overcome any challenge. We needed to spend our time to educate our community, even at the time. The Asian community thought that Qurbani is once in a lifetime. Qurbani is just done once in a lifetime. I said, no, Qurbani is done once every year. We started not only humanitarian movement, but also educational movement. Our first head or quarter was a donation box. 16 pounds in 517 Mosley Road. Every Saturday, we used to go there to open the box. Five pound, 10 pound, 20 pound, 50 pound, 100 pound, we found it there. It was one of my brothers who was doing his PhD in chemistry and I was doing a doctor of medicine in medicine in Birmingham. This is how we start. So don't say that I cannot raise one million pound. We can. Don't say that I cannot raise 10 million pounds. We can. Don't say that I cannot build this multi-tower building. We can. Or this school. We can. Or this hospital. We can. Or this factory. We can. But start with one step forward with a good intention and with a full iman. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then in what you do for the people. Show humility, show altruism, and submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how we started. So what you raise today is good, but not enough. We need more and more and more and more. Because we need to not only to give, we share, and from being to business, great idea. Not only for 100 or 50, but maybe 1,000 people. Because those will be able to create the local economy or a part of the local economy in Bangladesh. Now I will ask Brother Masoud if you want to ask some questions. Actually, because I know Masoud when I was uh, young. <laughs> now he's older than me. <laughs> you have been a great inspiration. I, I was a young boy with my son over there. And Dr. Hani uh, Albana, he picked a few of us and gave us responsibilities. And we didn't know what we were getting into. So one story is that the second year, he chose me and another brother to go to Bangladesh and distribute thousands of pounds. And I didn't know what I was doing. But there were people who were looking after us. I spent a whole month in Bangladesh, going from one city to another, every city almost. And it was such an amazing experience for me. And I think that's what has inspired me to remain involved in charity work, alhamdulillah. The question I want to ask you is, you said the first donation you received was 20 pence, and this is amazing. Now it's a billion pound industry within the Muslim community. Islamic Relief, for example, is one of the largest Western Islamic organizations. It's part of the BEC. And, uh, what encouragement would you give us, or what advice would you give us regarding how we promote ourselves, what are the right things for us to do? Sometimes one of our biggest dilemma is spending money in promotion, in uh, paying people to do things, because we feel that this money is from other people. We want to spend all of it, every penny of it. But of course there has to be some administration. Can you help us with that, please? First of all, there is no work without administration. Nothing. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divided the eight shares of zakat. One of them for the amirin alayha. Don't come and tell me zero percent. And I'm saying it to you 
And I keep saying it many, many times. Whoever say 0% admin, they are not saying the truth. And they can come and challenge me. I can challenge all of them. If you have another fund to pay the administration, declare it. If you tell me that you take the uh, uh, gift aid, gift aid to pay the salary, I will tell you, gift aid is a part of your donation. Because he, did, he donated 100 pounds. With gift aid becomes 128 pounds. So it means he, he is paying 128 pounds. So don't fool the community. And saying, I pay from gift aid and my admin is 0%. Any donation to any organization, any, any in-kind donation, a non-cash donation, is a donation. You have to declare it. You have to, you are a, you are a barrister. Are you, are you deal with this? Okay. You have to declare it. If you don't declare it, you deceive the community. That's why, to be very honest, what I'm saying, the non-Muslim organization are more transparent than some of our brothers. Because they want to raise as much as money as they can, they said zero admin. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. Allah decided, Khulafa al-Rashidin, used to take salary from Bayt al-Mal and others. So you gave admin with modesty. This is number one. If you want to carry on forever, you have to love people forever. Because the love of the people is the power. The love of the people to you is the power which will make you go forever. And this is how, this is how you can carry on without feeling the fatigue, without feeling tired, without feeling down and uh, depressed and others because there's no much help. Nowadays, when you look at the Muslim countries, the Muslim communities worldwide, Rohingya, Uyghur, Kashmir, India, uh, Yemen, uh, Syria, uh, Africa as a whole, and what else? Eritrea, all this, Somalia, Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, flood last year, all this need help. You cannot say that we cannot do that. You start and let Allah to give you. When you work, Allah will look at you. Then the Prophet will look at you. Then the whole Ummah will look at you. And make you the champion of that. So if you love people, Allah loves you. And this is the link. Allah gives to whom he gives. And whom he wants to give. Allah, the, Allah, Allah does not also deprive the kafir from rizq. Even sometimes the kafir get more rizq than the Muslim. Why? Because they work harder. So they deserve but when it comes on the Day of Judgment about Kufr and the Iman is something else. In dunya, they can take whatever they want. In akhirah, it's about Tawheed. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any other question? Uh, your uh, comment about the projects of Ikra and how it's progressing, any encouragement? <laughs> I was very much moved by from begging to business. to business. Because when we started in Bangladesh, our work was very traditional. Riksha, Riksha puller, fishing nets, is that right? Yeah. And all these kind of things. Even digging the wood you will and all this sort of thing. But from begging to business, it is a unique opportunity, a great opportunity, and to change the disabled into not only an able individual, but a giving individual, a business mentality. And this is something we need to support, not 100%, more than 100%. That's why I'm putting the live stream on my Facebook. Maybe one of them will come to Ikra and give you the money 
which will make the difference, inshallah. I believe in this uh, project, this disability project, the begging to business project, and the water project as well, and more, and the humanitarian response project that you are doing a for Turkey and for Syria. Thank you very much. Any, anybody, I think uh, if anyone from the audience, if you have a question, please. Uh, uh, very inspiring uh, few comments you made. And I think so, rightly so, that uh, we have a good intention and Allah Ta'ala will take over our responsibility, whatever we choose to do. In terms of the, uh, as you said, it started a global movement, Islamic uh, relief. Uh, no, no, the Muslim community on the whole. Okay, understand this thing, but you mean this as well, the humanitarian effort. Now, in terms of the uh, strength and wider acceptability of Islamic relief, there is one thing sometimes I come across with a question within our community. I sometimes ask myself, and also share with some other people as well, that we are living in this country, Alhamdulillah, a growing Muslim community. This country has given us everything and we're receiving everything equal. There's no distinction at all. Now, I can't see any substantial projects or any charity initiative by our Muslim organization doing this for the people of this community, those that are vulnerable. Say example, homeless. Say example, people are not able to maintain themselves, finding difficulties and difficulties. Our family issue is a serious problem in this country as well. I want to see your comment that why is it not possible for us to do something? Because I think it is necessary now. Thank you. Thank you. I mentioned that. I mentioned that in the 450 local Muslim charities. Local Muslim charities mean they are working here. And you know, sisters at the back, 45% of these local Muslim charities are headed by women. 45% of them are headed by women. And 45% of their fund is given to non-Muslims. If you go to Muslim Charities Forum, which is one of my brother Masoud's babies as well, <laughs> Muslim Charities Forum in London has a statistical data of the number of in Muslim international charities and the local Muslim charities. They became 450 of them. In my own view, we started to take in 1992 93 30% of the zakat to be spent locally. This is 30 years ago from the zakat of Islamic relief. We used to, if we have 100,000 pounds of the zakat, we keep 30,000 of them here and we spend the rest outside. So this philosophy of helping, uh, because as you say, start, charity starts at home, it started, we started in 1993. Now there are quite a few organizations specialized in local work in UK. I support this. 100%. That's why from 1984 till 2008-2010 we were just driving humanitarian movement. Now with the 450 local social organization, Muslim ones, we started another movement called social movement, not local movement, not humanitarian movement. Any other questions from sisters and from brothers and from young people? Come forward because I want to stand next to you to keep the number of likes rising on my Facebook. You like my Facebook? It keeps the number of likes growing. Come on, come on, come on. His name, your name is Zaki? Oh, what's he doing? Huh? Zakari or Zaki? Zaki. Hayatullah, ya Sheikh, may Allah bless you and accept all of your good work from you. Thank you. I'm You're learning an from you. inspiration to multiple generations, my father's generation and my generation as well. Uh, I wanted to ask, who is your inspiration, Sheikh, for all of the good work that you do? Who inspires you every day? Okay, stand here, don't go, because the more you see him on my Facebook, the more you like, huh? The more you like, huh? 
and they will look for a wife for you as well. <laughs> you, for, not for you, for him. Yeah, he's a young man. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, the journey started with my mother, like your mother. My mother used to tell me, mix with the pure people to feel that you are happier, because Allah gives you more. Okay? Don't look up to people who have got more resources than yourself, because you will be upset. Look, always, 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 always at what Allah has given you. This is what my mother was telling me, as a source of inspiration. The major source of my inspiration, that was a man, who started a global, endless social movement, religious movement, with a woman, with a child, and with a friend. His name is Muhammad. Four people started this journey more than 1400 years ago. To see nowadays, with all the challenges that we are facing, Islamophobia, counter-extremism, prevent or do not prevent, and all this false policy, we still following the footsteps of Muhammad as the source, as the source of our, our inspiration. A man, a woman, a child, and a friend. Now we are 1.8 billion, and there will be more and more and more. Take your inspiration from the teacher of humanity. Take our inspiration from the guidance of humanity, which came to us through Muhammad Wasallam. Take our inspiration from the only book who is untouchable, the only true book who is there. Why? Because Allah said, Inna nahnu nazalna dhikra wa inna la We have revealed the Quran and we are going to protect the Quran from any changes. Take the guidance from the book of Allah. Take the guidance from the teaching of the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the teacher of humanity and take the guidance from the companions and the khulafa of the Prophet Another source of inspiration is the people who claim that we are standing for, who cannot claim that we are standing for the poor without feeling their agony. When you feel their agony, you can't sleep, you can't blink. You have to keep working 24-7, not only 24-7, 28, 46, 96, 120 hours a day. Because the barakah in your 24 hours will be equivalent to 96 hours or 120 hours. Got it? Thank you. Can the audience uh, do more likes because I'm standing next to him? Thank you very much, Dr. Hanyal Can you say please? Oh, say okay. You have given us a long and experienceable and learnable space. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Hanyal We have a last speaker, a last speaker. We'd like to say a few words. Thank you. Vice Chancellor Najee Ahmed. One minute. Just I was listening to uh, Dr. Alhamdulillah's inspired words. I mean, he mentioned a few words which is very essential for all of us. Uh, I'm really glad to be here this evening. I know uh, Ikra International and people with them, with this organization, I know them very closely. They have been working very hard tirelessly for uh, improving the lives of the peoples, vulnerable peoples around the world. And uh, I particularly came to hear from Dr. al -Bhan. I have two other events I consent to attend your one. He was a man of inspiration. And I searched um, Google and uh, Wikipedia and uh, read your life history, how you have been able to uh, change uh, the face of charity, face of the UK, 
Now more than 400 challenges are in the When we started in 1918, nothing, nothing. And you mentioned two things I remember. First, money is not a problem. That's right. We need to learn how to face the challenges. And secondly, you mentioned another important thing. If you help others, Allah will help you. If you make someone else happier, Allah will make you even happier. That's right. So that's the very two important lesson I learned in my life. Thank you. Uh, may Allah give you long life. Yeah, yeah, all of us. And uh, may Allah give you a healthy life so that you can get more from you. Thank 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 you. Some of you have also, I think all of you have contributed one way or another for the program, for some of our projects. So I thank you. Thank you.